Hey girls and gals. Oh, what a start. <laughs> hey guys and gals, I am back. And if you're watching this, so are you. Showing up is half the battle, so good for us for just being here. Today I'm going to be taking random objects around my house and turning it into an electronic drum case. Drum roll, please. <laughs> First, let's dive into a little story, shall we? So I was scrolling through Insta, as one does, and I came across this ad and fell victim to the intelligent algorithm, or should I say, algorithm. And then I thought to myself, hmm, I'm gonna click it. So I did. And then I was like, hmm, maybe this will fill the void of emptiness and sadness and that I've been feeling ever since. Sorry, didn't mean to get dramatic on you, or should I say dramatic? Sorry, that was a drum joke. Anyways, long story short, spent all my monies on this microphone. It's a doubler or a doubler, I'm not sure. I'm a little confused. It's by a company called Boclea. Boclea, should really have figured out how to pronounce, but I didn't. So this is the first step, you need this microphone. Second step is to go around your house and find random objects that make very distinctive sounds. Let's take a trip around the old house and see what we can find, shall we? Picture of a turtle. Perfect. Whew, what a journey. Sweaty, but ready. Let's do this. First thing you want to do is set up your stuff. So I have the microphone and then I have all the things that make sound. They found around the house. And now I'm in my uh, digital audio workstation of choice. I personally use Logic Pro. But the great thing about this mic and software is it's separate from the DAW itself. So whatever DAW you use will work for you. I just opened Logic and I'm going to make a brand new project. I'm actually going to go to Drummer and I'm going to choose the genre electronic because I want to make an electronic drum kit. I'm going to listen to this pre-made one. That's cool, but I want to make my own. So I'm going to delete this one. Now, if I try to click R to record, it's not going to let me. So I'm just going to create a new track and I'm going to delete this one. Now, next, I want to make sure that my Logic Pro is set up for the doubler. I'm going to go to my preferences and go into audio. I want to make sure doubler USB is clicked for the input device and then whatever output you're using. For me, I'm just using built in output through the auxiliary cable and into my headphones. But if you are using a separate audio interface, then you could be using that as well. The great thing about this mic though, is that you can plug it right into your computer and it's actually advised that you do that instead of plugging it into an audio interface because it could create more latency. Speaking of latency, make sure that your input output buffer size is set to 128 or less. If it is too high, there will be too much latency in your mic. Next, you want to go into MIDI and just make sure that your MIDI remote is on. And I'm just going to set it to global, but you could set it to per channel strip if you want to separate the synths from the drums in Doubler. So I'm going to click out of that and yay, our Doubler is now connected to our DAW. Woohoo! So next, you're going to go into the actual Doubler software. I'm going to create a new profile. For now, we'll just turn off the controls for pitch. The doubler defaults the MIDI channel 10 to the trigger side of doubler. So you can just set your MIDI channel to 10 and that will just ensure that it is always using the trigger side of doubler if you're wanting to make percussion sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the plus here and I'm going to make my first drum. I want to start with a bass drum 
And if I look over here, I have all these options of sounds I want. Now I could go with like a side snare. Uh, I can go with a hand clap. But for this big one, I want to set it as a bass drum. Cool. In order to train this big pink pail into sounding like this bass drum, I'm going to click the microphone here that says train, and I'm going to hit it how I would hit it if I were playing it. I'm going to try to make it as consistent as possible. Next, I'm going to make a new sound. Let's see here. A snare. So I'm going to train it. And I'm going to click out of it. And let's see our different sound. Cool. Yay, it's working. I kind of want a hi-hat of some sort. And then one more. Ooh. And let's see what we have. Yay, it worked. A sheep, a drum, and a snake fall off a cliff. Thank you, I'll be here all night. There's a really important setting here, which is the input sensitivity. So a higher input sensitivity means it will be more responsive to velocity changes and nuanced sounds. The lower sensitivity, the more consistent the triggers will be in terms of velocity, but it is harder to do more complex beats. If you are a beginner like me, you might want to have it somewhere in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually just going to try to loop a cool beat here. I'm going to go into regions and I'm just going to auto quantize this to the um, 30 second notes and I've looped two bars and I'm going to set my tempo to 120. I'm going to turn the metronome on. I'm gonna listen through it. All right, so the fact that that didn't sound like maybe the greatest is due to the lack of drumming skills I possess. But that is because I've never had a drum kit before and now I do. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram as well as my music on Spotify. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.